This video is brought to you by Iconic History. Secret Sex Lives of Ancient Indians. The Hindu tradition contains the concept which outlines four major goals of life. It holds that every human being has four proper goals that are necessary and sufficient for a fulfilling and happy life. Those four goals are Dharma, Artha, Karma and Moksha. Each of these pursuits became a subject of study and led to prolific Sanskrit and some Prakrit languages literature in ancient India. Having conducted a deep research, I will outline a number of roles in which the ancient India's sexual literature will help you understand some of the traditions and customs of the Hindu religion. Set back and enjoy. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so that I may reach you every time we upload new content. Do also send us the I have subscribed comment in the comment section. The Karma Sutra is believed to be one of the earliest writings on sexual literature, which have been written in about AD 320 to 550 India, during the Gupta Golden Age, by a religious student and philosopher named Vatsyayana. The title translates roughly to, the aphorism of desire, or, the formula of lust, depending on who you ask. The Kama Sutra was essentially a guide to achieving the, four desire, goals of the Purushathas. Dharma. Artha. Karma. Moksha. The defining object of the Indian Kamasastra literature, according to Laura Desmond, an anthropologist and a professor of religious studies, is the harmonious sensory experience from a good relationship between the self and the world by discovering and enhancing sensory capabilities to affect and be affected by the world. Only about 20% of the book, one chapter, to be exact, deals with the topic of sexual positions. The rest of the books deal with the topics of desire, lust, seduction and the philosophy of love. Now, keep in mind that in ancient India, sex and sexuality was a large part of Indian culture. Polygamy and polyamory were common, especially in the upper classes. Nudity in art was plentiful and sex was considered a marital duty not just for the wife, but for the husband too. Though it was a private affair, both partners were expected to pleasure each other in the act. The Kama Sutra is mostly written in prose in the verse form, divided into 36, sometimes 35, chapters and seven parts. The first section, divided into four chapters, goes over love in general, along with the role of intermediaries, or wingmen, to assist in the acquisition of a lover and life goals. The second part is the most well-known, and contains ten chapters on sexual positions, sexual techniques such as oral sex and anal, biting, moaning, slapping and foreplay. The third and fourth sections are seven chapters in total, detailing the intricacies of obtaining a wife, marriage, wifely duties and the care and treatment of a wife. The fifth chapter, in retrospect, discusses the techniques of seducing other people's wives. The sixth section has six chapters that go over courtesans, or mistresses, the acquisition of such and friends with benefits. The seventh and final section includes two chapters on attracting people and using sexual prowess to improve physical attraction. The Kama Sutra was first translated and published in 1883 by Indian archaeologist Bhagwan Lal Andraji, and has since been reprinted multiple times. The Ancient Hindu Sex Games Ghat Kanchuki This game was played in some parts of India. In this game, a group of men and women were made to indulge in sexual acts for the entertainment of the public. The game would go on until each man in the group had sexual intercourse with every other woman in the group. The rules were simple, in which there had to be equal number of men and women who assembled secretly at night. This was done without any consideration of caste or relationship. All the people in the group sat around a paper on which a chakra or wheel was drawn. The women used to remove their clothes. After disrobing themselves, they would put their clothes in a pot kept at the center. Then, 
Each man picked up a cloth at random to select his, her partner for the night. The game continued till everyone had slept with each other. According to a Hindu tantric text, it was mentioned in the Kalanava Tantra that whatever good or bad happened during that particular night would never be disclosed the next day to anyone. Incestual sex. It isn't news that ancient India didn't give two shits about blood relations when it came to sex. I mean cousins got married to each other and had kids so it was all okay. Remember when Gotra marriages happened? But then people suddenly realized, hey, I have a brother or sister and they have genitalia, they can have sex with me for fun. And everything kinda became hazy after that. Kautubic sex as they called it, was basically what people on Pornhub have been looking for. So apparently Kautubic sex was mentioned in the appendix of the Mahabharata. And in the 10th mandala of Rig Veda, there is a mention of a sexual conversation between Yam and Yami. Belief and understanding. Ancient Hindu practiced sex and sexual literature with an understanding that it could bring harmony between the body and soul. The Kama Sutra was originally written in ancient Hindu. Thus it was treated as a religious manuscript. The teachings in the Kama Sutra was treated as an element that would bring the fulfillment of the concept of the Purushathas. Thanks for watching, do like, subscribe and comment.